Kirsten, I, I want to ask you, I'm assuming it's a similar story that you're seeing. Yeah, labor is incredibly important to our business. We don't make anything. We create an experience at our resorts, and uh, we announced a big investment in labor for this upcoming season, $175 million investment in order to get fully staffed, which is increased wages, increased benefits, investment in leadership development, and an investment in affordable housing. And staffing right now is looking good. You've been making a lot of investments also in Europe, expanding there. Um, really interesting time in Europe when you consider the strong dollar and when you consider that Europe's economy is not nearly as strong as ours. I guess this is a long-term play. Why Europe? What do you see there? Yeah, we're very excited about Europe. The skier market in Europe is almost three times the size of the market in North America. And our first acquisition we're incredibly excited about is Andermatt in Switzerland. And we really view this as an opportunity to grow our market share of the luxury European ski market, as well as listen and learn to unlock some future expansion and growth opportunities in Europe. So you said first, you're looking for other acquisition, acquisition targets too. Yes, we are. And, and when After you, a couple of years to prove that, how good we are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from a major investor, Ron, you have talked about both of these companies for a long time. They're both long time term investments. Um, what is it that you like? What is it that you see? One of the things that's really interesting about Vail is the advanced ticket sales that they make. So 72% of our tickets right now, the people who ski on a lift buy it before it even snows, buy it in advance. That's one thing really interesting here. And as far as Hyatt, what we're doing there is we're selling off assets that we own at incredible prices. Our company in the stock market's valued for 11 or 12 times EBITDA, and we're selling them for 15, 16, 17 times, and we're using that money to buy back stock. In addition to that, what we're doing is we're keeping back management contracts for all the properties we sell. So it's very interesting. It's capital light becoming, and here we have a product that is being sold in advance before it even snows. So becoming almost like a, a tech capital light company to a certain extent. I mean, that's the new model, Mark. We're, yeah, we've been on an asset light um, strategy for the last five years. And as Ron said, we've sold over $4 billion of hard assets, hotel assets, and we reinvested a lot of that in platforms for growth. Apple Leisure Group, Two Roads Hospitality, and Miraval, uh, the high-end um, destination spa resort company. And, um, and all of those we've bought are really, we created them for about high single digit, low double digit kind of multiples while we're selling real estate in the high teens. So it's uh, it's been quite a, a swap and the earning shift towards asset light earnings has been pretty pronounced. Um, so that's 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 the that's the path that we've been on. I'll, I'll ask each of you, what's the biggest challenge that you face right now, especially as we head into a potential downturn for the economy? That's what every um, business leader seems to be talking about. How do you prepare? What are you concerned about, Kirsten? Yeah, I think you hit on it earlier when you talked about labor. I mean, it's so important for us to get fully staffed. It is a top priority for us, the reason we made this significant investment. Our employees, our frontline employees, are, you know, they create the experience for our guests. We did get fully staffed in Australia this winter. We did get fully staffed over the summer. Our staffing numbers are looking strong as we head into this winter, and I think that's the most important piece because that's how we deliver the guest experience, which ultimately will then retain our guests because they have a great experience and then they'll come back and we generate the loyalty through that. So really you focused say that on your, labor. Your numbers are looking strong. What does that mean? How many positions or what percentage of your staff do you have Well, we're still ramping up for the season. Actually, we just opened one of our ski resorts, Keystone. So we're still ramping up, but we are seeing our retention of our staff from last winter to this winter strong, retention from summer staffing into winter strong, and applicants and the pool of applicants coming in is looking strong as well. So I'm feeling optimistic, but it is the, the number one priority that I'm focused on right now. Mark, how about you? Yeah, I mean, we're, of course, aware that there's recession risk, but like Kirsten described earlier, we serve the high-end traveler. So we think that the risk that we face in terms of travel demand uh, slacking is relatively more limited. Um, the biggest issue I've got uh, that I look forward to is two, two things. They're, they're very different causes, but similar result, which is China. Yeah. China has been on its back most of the year. And so we posted a record third quarter, a record second quarter, and a record third quarter, even with China on its back. And we have over 100 properties in China. Um, but the lockdowns have caused serious uh, uh, spikes in trust with respect to occupancies. 
So if China starts to recover next year, that's just going to be additive to what we what we're doing. But I've got my eye on China in terms of what that what that post COVID uh, lockdown looks like. And then the second is interest rates in the United States has slowed down construction of new hotels. Period. End of story. That's probably a good thing for you. Um, well, yeah, supply and supply sense. and demand. It's really works in our industry and it's yeah. working in the, in the favor of um, pricing and and being able to sustain uh, our our um, our uh, being able to satisfy demand. But um, you know, at some point, we, we have to get back to building hotels again. So, and I think it's more about the uncertainty of not knowing when the uh, the Fed will be sort of pivoting uh, back to a more uh, constructive and less uh, less constrictive uh, policy. That's the that's the key issue because these assets are going to be in place for 30, 40, 50 years. Um, and so trying to make decisions based on what's going to happen this coming month or quarter, it's a little short sighted. But developers do underwrite based on what they can borrow. Right. So that's the other major.